know what a riddle is? Yes, it's a puzzling or confusing question posed as a problem to be solved or guessed. Here are a couple of riddles for you. See if you can guess the answers. When things go wrong, what can you always count on? Your fingers. And what is black and white and blue? A sad zebra. Hello everyone and Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's story is an old folk tale from a country called Czechoslovakia and it's all about a young girl who proves herself to be very clever indeed at solving all kinds of riddles. But before I begin, I have a very important announcement. Can you make sure your mummy or your daddy or a grown-up is close by and listening? Ready? Exciting news! This month, Journey with Story is going to be celebrating its 100th episode. Yes, you heard me. 100th episode! And as part of our celebration, we are going to hold a raffle. The grand prize winner will get three of my published books, signed and dedicated to them. There will be a mix of other exciting prizes such as a Journey with Story colouring book and Journey with Story stickers. To enter the raffle, you can either subscribe to the podcast and write a review or follow me on Instagram and send in a photo of your child's drawing from their favourite episode of Journey with Story. You can find all the details on how to enter in this episode description or on the Journey with Story website at www.journeywithstory.com Deadline date is August the 20th and we will be announcing the lucky winners on our 100th episode on August the 27th. And there's more. Yes, more excitement. As part of our celebration, you can listen and watch me live on Instagram reading one of my own published picture books. Which one, you may ask? Well, you'll have to wait and see. Okay, let's take a journey with Clever Manka. And this episode is dedicated to a wonderful loyal listener, Milo, who sent me a beautiful drawing after listening to Little Great Line. Milo lives in Los Angeles and his mum tells me he's addicted to this podcast. Milo had a birthday on June the 18th. He turned nine years old. So... Wishing you a very, very happy belated birthday, Milo. This episode is for you. Enjoy. Oh, there's one word in this story at the beginning that you may not know. Heifer. It's just another word for a young female cow. There was once a rich farmer who was as greedy and dishonest as he was rich. He was always driving a hard bargain and always getting the better of his poor neighbours. One of these neighbours was a humble shepherd who in return for service was to receive from the farmer a heifer. But when it came time to pay, the farmer refused to give the shepherd the heifer and the shepherd was forced to lay the matter before the mayor of the town. Now the mayor was a young man and as yet not very experienced. He listened to both sides and when he had pondered the matter for a while, he said, Instead of deciding this case, I will put a riddle to you both and the man who makes the best answer shall have the heifer. Are you agreed? The farmer and the shepherd accepted this proposal and the mayor said, Listen, here is my riddle. What is the fastest thing in the world? What is the sweetest thing? What is the richest? Think out your answers and bring them to me at this same hour tomorrow. The farmer went home in a temper. What kind of a mare is this young fellow? He growled. 
If you'd let me keep the heifer, I'd have sent him a basket full of pears. But now I'm going to lose the heifer, for I can't think of any answer to his foolish riddle. Oh, what is the matter, husband, his wife asked. It's that new mare. The old one would have given me the heifer without any argument, but this young fellow thinks to decide the case by asking us foolish riddles. When he told his wife what the riddle was, she laughed and told him, Ha, but that is easy to solve. Our grey mare must be the fastest thing in the world. You know yourself, nothing ever passes us on the road. As for the sweetest, did you ever taste honey any sweeter than ours? And I'm sure there's nothing richer than our chest of golden coins that we've been laying by these forty years. The farmer beamed with joy. You are as clever a wife as a man could wish for. You are right, that heifer remains ours. Now, when the shepherd returned home, downcast and weary, his daughter, a clever girl called Manka, met him at the door of the cottage and asked him, What is it, father? What did the mayor say? The shepherd sighed. I'm afraid I've lost the heifer. The mayor set us a riddle and I know I shall never guess it. Perhaps I can help you, Manka said. What is it? So the shepherd gave her the riddle and the next day as he was setting out for the mayor's, Manka told him what answers to make. When he reached the mayor's house, the farmer was already there, rubbing his hands and beaming with self-importance. Again, the mayor posed the riddle to the two men and turned to the farmer for his answer. The farmer cleared his throat and puffed out his chest and said, The swiftest thing in the world? Why, my dear sir, that's my grey mare, of course, for no other horse ever passes us on the road. The sweetest? Honey from my beehives, to be sure. The richest? What can be richer than my chest of golden coins? Then the farmer squared his shoulders and smiled triumphantly. Hmm, said the young mare, clearly unimpressed. Then he turned to the shepherd. And how do you answer this riddle? The shepherd bowed politely and he said, The fastest thing in the world is thought. For thought can run any distance in the twinkling of an eye. The sweetest thing of all is sleep. For when a man is tired and sad, what can be sweeter? The richest thing is the earth. For out of the earth come all the riches of the world. Good, the mayor said. Well done, the heifer is yours. Later, the mayor asked the shepherd, Tell me now, who gave you those answers? I'm sure they never came out of your own head. At first, the shepherd tried not to tell, but when the mayor pressed him, he confessed that they came from his daughter, Manka. The mayor, who thought that he would like to make another test of Manka's cleverness, sent for ten eggs. He gave them to the shepherd and he said, Take these eggs to Manka and tell her to have them hatched out by tomorrow and to bring me the chicks. When the shepherd reached home and gave Manka the mayor's message, Manka laughed and said, Take a handful of millet and go right back to the mayor. Say to him, My daughter sends you this millet. She says that if you plan to grow it and have it harvested by tomorrow, she'll bring you the ten chicks and you can feed them the right grain. When the mayor heard this, he laughed heartily. That's a clever girl of yours, he told the shepherd. If she's as comely as she is clever, I think I'd like to marry her. Tell her to come to see me, but she must come neither by day nor by night, neither riding nor walking, neither dressed nor undressed. When Manka received this message, she waited until the next dawn when night was gone and day not yet arrived. Then she wrapped herself in a fish net, and throwing one leg over a goat's back and keeping one foot on the ground, she went to the mayor's house. Now I ask you, did she go dressed? No, she wasn't dressed. A fishnet isn't clothing. Did she go undressed? Of course not, for wasn't she covered with a fishnet? Did she walk to the mares? No, she didn't walk, for she went with one leg thrown over a goat. Then did she ride? When she reached the mare's house, she called out, Here I am, Mr. Mayor, and I've come neither by day nor by night, neither riding nor walking, neither dressed nor undressed. The young mare was so delighted with Manka's cleverness and so pleased with her comely looks that he proposed to her at once and in a short time he married her. 
But understand, my dear Manka, he said, you are not to use that cleverness of yours at my expense. I won't have you interfering in any of my cases. In fact, if ever you give advice to anyone who comes to me for judgment, I'll turn you out of my house at once and send you home to your father. All went well for a time. Manka busied herself in her housekeeping and was careful not to interfere in any of the mayor's cases. Then, one day, two farmers came to the mayor to have a dispute settled. One of the farmers owned a mare which had foaled in the marketplace. The colt had run under the wagon of the other farmer and thereupon the owner of the wagon claimed the colt as his property. The mayor, who was thinking of something else while the case was being presented, said carelessly, the man who found the colt under the wagon is, of course, the owner of the colt. As the owner of the mare was leaving the mare's house, he met Manka and stopped to tell her about the case. Manka was ashamed of her husband for making so foolish a decision, and she said to the farmer, Come back this afternoon with fishing net and stretched across the dusty road. When the mare sees you, he will come out and ask you what you are doing. Say to him that you're catching fish. When he asks you how you can expect to catch fish in a dusty road, tell him it's just as easy for you to catch fish in a dusty road as it is for a wagon to fall. Then he'll see the injustice of his decision and have the colt returned to you. But remember one thing, you mustn't let him find out that it was I who told you to do this. That afternoon, when the mayor chanced to look out the window, he saw a man stretching a fish net across the dusty road. He went out to him and asked, What are you doing? Fishing? Fishing in a dusty road? Are you daft? Well, the man said, it's just as easy for me to catch a fish in a dusty road as it is for a wagon to fall. Then the mayor recognised the man as the owner of the mayor, and he had to confess that what he said was true. Of course the colt belongs to your mayor and must be returned to you, but tell me, he said, who put you up to this? You didn't think of it yourself. The farmer tried not to tell, but the mayor questioned him until he found out that Manka was at the bottom of it. This made him very angry. He went into the house and called his wife. Manka, he said, do you forget what I told you would happen if you went interfering in any of my cases? Home you go this very day. I don't care to hear any excuses. The matter is settled. You may take with you the one thing you like best in my house, for I won't have people saying that I treated you shabbily. Manka made no outcry. Very well, my dear husband, I shall do as you say. I shall go to my father's cottage and take with me the one thing I like best in your house. But don't make me go until after supper. We have been very happy together, and I should like to eat one last meal with you. Let us have no more words and be kind to each other as we've always been and then part as friends. The mayor agreed to this and Manka prepared a fine supper of all the dishes which her husband was particularly fond of. The mayor opened his choicest wine and toasted Manka's health. Then he sat to and the supper was so good and he ate and he ate and he drank his wine and at last he grew drowsy and he fell sound asleep in his chair. Then, without awakening him, Manka had him carried out to the wagon that was waiting to take her home to her father. The next morning, when the mayor opened his eyes, he found himself lying in the shepherd's cottage. What does this mean? he roared out. Nothing, dear husband, nothing, Manka said. You know, you told me I might take with me the one thing I like best in your house. So, of course, I took you. That's all. For a moment, the mayor rubbed his eyes in amazement. Then he laughed loud and heartily to think how Manka had outwitted him. Manka, he said, you're too clever for me. Come on, my dear, let's go home. So they climbed back into the wagon and drove home. The mayor never again scolded his wife, but thereafter, whenever a very difficult case came up, he always said, I think we had better consult my wife. You know, she's a very clever woman. So, lots of fun riddles to solve in this story. Do you know any other riddles? You can send them to us on Instagram at Journey with Story and we can share them with others. And remember, later this month we're going to be celebrating Journey with Story's 100th episode. Isn't that exciting? So stay tuned to hear more news on how we're going to be celebrating. 
and happy belated birthday again to Milo. Remember, get busy writing your reviews, drawing your pictures. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Story. Story.